Okay, so uh, the lecture is recorded for the purpose, I mean, for the benefit of those who are absent. Okay, so this is the background or the introduction for the topic. Okay, throughout the semester, if you notice, uh, we have been focusing on um, negligence. Okay, uh, through, I mean, uh, uh, about, uh, about half of the semester. Okay, we focus on negligence. All right, and then uh, we haven't studied. I mean, you haven't uh, you haven't come to the part where you study remedy, which is the majors, or that one actually. Uh, it relates to the right okay, of the plaintiff, right rights of the claimant to get compensation. Okay, but uh, whatever it is, okay, the proceed uh, in terms of procedural, okay, procedural wise, um, the one who is asking for compensation or is having. Or is entitling the right to compensation. Uh, what uh, what he has to do? Okay, usually he has to bring legal action, file for a legal suit. So that's why we have um the the suit or the case uh, is named uh, as plaintiff versus defendant or plaintiff and defendant. Okay, and this is uh what we um call or name as legal action or legal suits. But of course, this is about uh, this is about civil legal. Action. This is still the uh, the introduction. Okay, I mean before we go to, uh, how how come the defense? Okay, what's the function? Okay, in what situation the defenses will be relevant? We have many people waiting in the room. I think I have clicked admit all just now. Okay, I think everybody has um been are here. Okay. And then, in order to start for a legal action, okay, a civil legal action here, there must be specific cause of action. And then that's why uh, what I mentioned just now, okay, uh, throughout the semester, uh, early part of the semester, we focus on negligence, okay, and this is one of the uh, important okay, causes of action under law of thoughts, okay, and later when you go to um, your part, your part two, I mean your thoughts two later, you are going to focus on intentional thoughts. I mean thoughts which are being committed with intention. I mean like like a trespass, okay, nuisance, defamation, uh, and uh, so forth. But then all this um topic, okay, basically actually this is it uh forms. Uh, causes of action in order for the claimant, for the plaintiff to file for a legal action. So that's the flow, that's, that's the sequence. There must be uh, cause of action. Okay, choose one, usually one or even two or three. Okay, choose one cause of action. And then uh, plaintiff needs to prove, okay, on, I mean, uh, whoever uh, on the part of the defendant that um, defendant is liable for these causes of action. Okay. And then there comes, okay, meaning that here on the part of the claimant or plaintiff, uh, he, he or she must prove cause of action. On the part of the defendant, okay, remember this is actually uh, civil, okay, civil action. So on the part of the defendant, he has the equal right to defend himself. Uh, there comes the topic defenses. I mean defenses, they are available to the defendant. Okay, from the word defend, defenses. So to defend the action which is brought against him okay so and then how uh, how does defendant could do so basically he can uh, choose okay or he can um, pick and choose whichever is relevant according to the situation according to the circumstances so it could it might include facts as well as legal grounds but for us tonight we are going to focus on the legal okay legal uh, grounds which is which are legal defenses lah, okay so these grounds to whatever grounds uh, which which are available to the defendant they are known or they are named as defenses okay that's the introduction i mean in what situation defenses are relevant Okay, what happened? For example, a plaintiff has proved uh, whatever causes of action on his part, proof negligence, okay, proof duty of care, breach, as well as causation. Everything uh, is being proved. But on the part of the defendant, for example, he has a strong defense. Okay, why the negligence happens, for example? Okay, strong defense to defend his case. Then if he managed to prove the defense here, okay, what happened to the case? The um the liability can be reduced. I mean, just a little liability, little payment of money, or maybe it can eliminate no liability at all. So in that situation, defenses here can absolve defendant from liability. Okay, despite that, plaintiff has proved his 
causes of action. But because availability of these defenses, so it is a very, very strong. Okay? I mean, it can uh, absorb, it can eliminate okay? whatever liability which is supposed to be imposed on the part of the defendant. Okay, so far, so good, everyone. Are you following or not? Can I hear uh, your response? Okay, or not? All right. Yes, okay. Okay. Yeah, because all this while, okay, was well, for example, strict liability, uh, never shock, all those causes of action. So now this is uh, from different perspective. So now we are uh, arguing, okay, we are making whatever argument uh, on the part of the defendant. So defendant can choose whichever uh, relevant defenses okay, available to him. So this is our topic for tonight. Let's move further. So as I said earlier, uh, for this topic, okay, uh, this is actually for to make it easier for the discussion. Lah. I mean, we we uh, we I mean we we can uh, if we don't have any parts, it, it's okay as well. Okay, because uh, at the end of the day, key okay, defendant need to choose whichever is relevant here. But for the purpose of discussion, for the convenience purpose, okay, we are we have divided into two parts. Okay, part one will cover the longer part. I mean, the um the discussion will be deeper okay it will be um, much bulky compared to part two so part one uh, there are three important all important but then slightly important compared to the other so three important important uh, grounds of defenses here okay we are going to start tonight with a uh, voluntary non-fit injury that's the latin term or we are using uh, the acronym vnfi i mean when when you answer your 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 test or your exams later okay for the first time you just uh, write full name voluntary non fit injury and then you put in a bracket vnfi and later you just uh, write vnfi vnfi okay and then the second one okay uh, let's say we have time so we are going to cover as well for tonight illegality okay uh, later when you go to your uh, semester 2 part 2 you also have the topic illegality for your law of contract. But law of contract 2 lah. Okay, later when you do your contract 2. Now you are doing contract 1, right? And then uh, the third um, uh, defense okay, under part 1 will be inevitable accident. Because uh, we are dealing with many, many cases involving accident. Okay, Especially in Malaysia, we have lots of cases, road traffic accident, or even whatever accident in the workplace, for example, accident in construction. So here, there could, I mean, this defense is very, very, Useful, very, very relevant on the part of the defendant. Okay, and then once you are done with this uh, part one, okay, the first three defenses, we are going to continue with part two. So I plan okay, to have, I mean, uh, to, to start the lecture for part two next week. Lah. Okay, we don't have to um, hurry because we have enough time, inshallah. So part two next week later, uh, we are going to focus on five, but all the just um short short uh, short discussion okay i mean uh, not really detailed not really deep so we are going uh, to have mistake mistake also will be a topic for your contract too later of course different uh, same topic but different content altogether okay mistake and then we also have acts of god we also have private defense we also have necessity and the last but not least we we also have statutory authority but that one is part two so just put it aside we are going to uh, have this uh, next next week okay so no need to worry i mean after new year lah, we are going to have it next year okay new year 2024 okay let's start with voluntary non-fit injury okay so as you can see in the picture uh, one of the circumstances in which vnfi will be relevant is in sports so i mean many of us love sport kan even though we don't play sports sports but we love to watch sports kan all right so um there could be injury there could be accident in sports so VNFI could be relevant. Okay, it would be relevant defense on the part who uh, who caused the accident. So maybe there's no liability, no no need to pay for compensation. Okay, we are going to have a look at this particular defense. But sport is just one of the scenarios. Okay, we have a long list of circumstances in which this defense could be relevant. But sometimes a student like to pronounce as voluntary. I mean, it's okay so long you you have the spelling uh, correct lah, okay uh, usually for myself i pronounce as volunteer but i i think both are okay voluntary or volunteer but the spelling is i lah, okay volunteer all right so for uh, vnfi here we are there are three parts okay, of the discussion not that long but pretty long first we are going to focus on the definition the meaning of the word meaning of this phrases and then we are going to move on to important part, which are the elements. Okay, but only two. Usually we have three elements. So now we only have 
2 K2 elements to prove Vn Fi. Remember, okay, this is to be done by defendant on the part of the defendant in order to be released from uh, liability. Okay, liability of pay, payment of compensation whatsoever. And then we are going to focus on some of the com common scenarios or common circumstances in which Vn Fi could be relevant so this is based on case law so we are going to start with employment or workman workman cases and then um, involving driver passenger cases and then sports cases like i mentioned just now in the picture and last but not least rescue cases is everyone okay are you all still with me alia yeah. are you okay? uh -huh. anyway have you all taken your your dinner uh, tonight not yet Yes, yes uh, good. Yes, usually, uh, for myself, I have early dinner okay, usually because I sleep early, usually before by 10 or 11, I sleep already. Right? But for tonight, maybe late, lah, okay, because we have um, class. Okay, let's move further. Okay, we are, we are looking at the meaning or interpretation okay, of the word. Some of you, I think your internet is not stable, kan? Because I keep on, uh, I mean, the, the message uh, to admit, kan? Admitting here, here and there. So popping popping up. So mean that here maybe you are log log out and then you uh, you want to log in again. I understand, okay? The internet. Okay. So for this VNFI, which is very important. So we have at least one, two, three, four, five, five cases, or we call it wajib cases. I mean, this is other cases that you must know in order to resolve problem for VNFI. You have more, okay? You have you can have more, you have all the supporting cases. Uh, in addition to this, uh, compulsory or wajib cases. Okay, here we are going to start with um, Imperial Chemical Industries, or you can write uh, the short short name, the okay, acronym ICI, the okay, ICI Limited. Remember last time we have um, Felda, kan? I mean, the, 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 there is a full name and there is a short name. So you just um, you just write short name. Ikram, keep on logging out, logging in, kan? Here, what happened to the internet, Ikram? Okay, I keep on. Uh, pressing on the button admit okay and then we are going to look at smith and baker all these uh, common law leading cases and then we are coming back to malaysia we have uh, at least one case from malaysia in a uh, unique case okay very easy to remember even the name is long and quite unique so make sure you uh, can memorize the name okay naim especially i'm not sure whether naim is here tonight jap tengok oh tak apalah later uh, participants we have 20 so we have 22 kan in our class, so 21, 21 in, our, in our class. Okay, and then we have, uh, the name is Kanagasa Bapati. Uh. Make sure you spell it correctly. Kanagasa Bapati, okay, and nursing term. I remember last time, uh, maybe students, uh, they got blur, okay, they cannot remember Kanagasa Bapati. So they, they put in a case against nursing term. I mean, you mentioned defendant rather than plaintiff. Okay, la, I know you are referring to this case. Okay, and then another leading case uh, from common law, natal ship and western, as well as uh, another case okay, involving Carter, uh, Boater. The name is Boater. Okay, Boater and Rowley Regis Corporation. So if you notice, um, cases at common law, uh, most of the cases are classic, okay, classic example. But the rule stands good until today. I mean, it is relevant until today. And in Malaysia, we apply the rule, actually. All right. So... Uh, I mean, what's the meaning of the word volunteer or volunteer non-fit injury here? I'm popular screen. I mean, all the toolbar appears and then I cannot read the, the first line. What's the first line of the screen? Blah, blah, blah. The first few, few words. Anyone can read to me? The first bullet. P-N-F-I. Mm -hmm. And then? Equals to consent. Equals uh, to consent. Volunteer. I cannot see the word consent. Okay. So usually the uh, plain meaning, okay, or the direct meaning or easy meaning of the word uh, volunteer here, okay, it means consent. I mean, easier said, when we, when we talk about volunteer and free injury, actually it relates to consent or longer, um, longer meaning or longer word will be voluntary assumption of risk. I mean, the person. Uh, or the plaintiff okay, voluntarily, okay, I mean, on his own, voluntarily assume the risk. Uh, uh, I mean, he is ready to accept the risk. He knows okay, the risk of doing 
or being being involved in that uh, in such activity. And this is quotation uh, from the case you are going to discuss after this, Smith and Baker. Uh, the the judge was Lord Hershaw. Okay, he said the meaning of volunteer and free injury is one. Okay, one here refers to uh plaintiff. Okay, one who has invited or one who has assented. Consent assented is consent. Okay, to what to an act being done towards him. So in such a situation, he cannot uh, when he suffers okay, whatever injury from. Uh, his consent here, okay, he cannot complain later as a legal wrong. I mean, you consent to it, you cannot really ask for the uh, payment of compensation later, okay, but provided elements are being fulfilled, okay, under the uh, the, the, the rule, uh, doctrine of voluntary non-fit injury. Okay, let's move further. All right, you can see the picture there, okay, uh, the picture actually from Dr. Sony, so I didn't change the picture. Uh, the first one okay, about secrets okay, and then whatever um, risk, okay, uh, those who are, I mean, those smoker, lah, okay? and then uh, tobacco, all right, uh, and then uh, all related to smoking or cigarettes. In what way is relevant? Okay, so like I said just now, so uh, the simple equivalent will be VN VNFI means consent, but then again, uh, are they really um, exactly, I mean, are they really mirroring each other? Okay, yeah, as far as legal meaning is concerned here. Okay, but then you, uh, the answer will be no. Okay, most of the time it's no. I mean, VNFI might cover consent, but consent doesn't mean VNFI. Yeah, because why? Uh, how do we know from uh, case law? Lah, right, from these other cases, because occasionally, sometimes, okay, courts uh, give different Meaning, meaning here, consent doesn't mean, I mean, it's not really equivalent, even though they are related, but uh, they are not exactly identical or similar. Here, the court says, I mean, this is taken from some of the cases. So the court says, consent applies okay, when plaintiff does give consent. I mean, this is simple. But for VNFI, it is slightly much more complicated. Okay, it it entails or it involves some legal requirements. Okay, VNFI applies okay, when he, he actually uh, refers to plaintiff or complainant when he does not consent. But the way he conduct himself, the way uh, his reaction, okay, the way um, the way that uh, I mean, what his gesture, okay, his word perhaps, okay, so conduct himself. So as to lead, okay, we might infer, okay, the defendant to believe that he does. I mean, he is giving impression that that he uh, consent to the risk. Okay, mean that here. He doesn't say he consent, but then from the way, from his reaction, from his conduct, so we can say, oh, defendant believe that um you consent to it, but later he denied lah. Okay, so you can see VNFI is much more complicated as compared to consent. Consent is simple, but for VNFI, um, it is uh it requires much more. Okay, that's why we have two elements under VNFI. Yeah. Hmm, you can meet yourself, okay. Alright, so this is taken from this case lah. Okay, Freeman and Home Office. Uh, the quotation from Sir John Donaldson. Okay, so based on this quotation, okay, this is the thing that we can extract or that we can derive. Okay, consent can be implied from conduct or expressed in words. I mean, in the context of BNFI here. In that here, we can infer, we can imply based on conduct. Doesn't mean, you don't have to say, oh, I consent. Okay, I mean, we can say, we can infer, oh, the way that you re react, the way that you behave, okay, the way that you do your act, it means you consent to it. Example, participating in whatever games, in boxing match. Because boxing, um, our meeting will end in 10 minutes. I think you need to rejoin after 10 minutes, okay? I mean, using the same link lah. Uh, upper zoom give me warning meeting will end in 10 minutes please upgrade I mean if upgrade you need to pay again right so I don't this is free free account okay so consent can be implied uh, from conduct or expressed in words example participating in boxing match especially whatever game or match uh, which uh, have the risk of injury can boxing they punch each other can I mean you know you are going to punch and you're going to be punched as well so can we say you consent to be injured in that particular situation? And that's the question, okay? And then uh, for medical or treatment purpose, okay, when you present your arm for injection, 
do you consent to be uh, injected? Okay, what happened if you have some uh, injury later or maybe side effect or whatever uh, adverse uh, implication after that? Uh, can we sorry, can, can we actually apply this concept BNF? I mean, you consent uh, to the injection so you cannot really claim later. Uh, what could be the position? And then, like I said just now from the picture, smoking cigarette. I mean, uh, those smokers, when they smoke, they know, kan? I mean, they are aware of the risk and they consent to the risk. Okay, can we apply BNFI? I mean, if they suffer from lung cancer later, can they sue the um, cigarette company? Uh, because, oh, I, I smoke your product, your cigarette, and then now I suffer lung cancer. So can they smoke? Because they are aware of the risk. Can we say, oh, you consent to the risk, so you cannot really uh, file a suit against the cigarette company. Okay, so this is all the... Uh, situation which might be uh, relevant okay, for the discussion. Okay, let's move further. Let's go direct to the requirements or elements. Okay, so from case law, we are able to extract two, uh, two elements or two things or two points here. Okay, the first one, elements of knowledge. So plaintiff knows about the risk. Meaning here, if you don't know, then uh, out of discussion. Okay, first there must be elements. Okay, he's aware, he knows about it. Okay, and then plus together. Okay, both must be present. Second one, he knows and he consents to such risk because sometimes you know, but you don't consent, but you don't have choice. So can we say that um you could be imposed with BNFI later? Okay, uh, the moment that you suffer injury. So we must prove both elements here. The second one could be tricky actually. The concept of consent under uh legal argument. All right. And we take the quotation from this case, uh, Letang and Ottawa Electric Railway Company. Uh, here it is stated, okay, if the defendants desire to succeed on the ground that the maxim is applicable. I mean, defendant wants to uh, protect okay, himself here. So they must obtain a finding of facts. Okay? I mean, must prove to the court, okay, facts finding, that the claimant, okay, the one who suffered injury, okay, uh, I mean, the one who is suing the defendant, Freely and voluntarily with full knowledge. I mean, very strong word here. Okay, freely, voluntarily, full knowledge okay, of the nature. Knowledge of what? Knows about what? Know about the nature, know about the extent of the risk. Okay, so meaning that he impliedly agreed to incur the injury. So later, let's say he uh, he suffered injury and then he he uh, file a suit against defendant, defendant can say, oh, you know, okay, you know, and then you voluntarily enter, I mean, do the activities, and then uh, you consent to it. I mean, you cannot now file a suit against me. I mean, it could be, um, uh, I mean, uh, the defendant can be absolved from liability, can escape from paying the compensation. So must prove on the part of the claimant. Who will prove defendant? Because defendant wants to escape from liability. Okay, let's go to the case so that we can uh, see uh, the um, argument clearer. Okay, this is the case of I ICI, the, the acronym, okay? Uh, but the full name is Imperial, okay? ICI and Shadwell, 1964. What happened here? There are two part three parties all together, okay? Plaintiff and brother, okay? I mean, they work uh, at the same workplace, okay? So, they were cert certificated and experienced, certified, okay? Certified and experienced shot fires. The one who, who work in uh, quarry, kind okay? uh, the one who uh, who do the explosion, okay? the one who caused the explosion to happen, okay? And he, they were, I mean, both of them were employed by ICI Limited. That's the name of the company. Okay, and they were in the quarry, and then uh, this is the their job scope. You can see it's very high risk, and huh? even working in the in a quarry, very high risk. Okay, here part of the brothers' work, both of them here included wiring up uh, detonators, like in the picture. Okay, to 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 cause the explosion. Okay, that's the the things like the equipment and checking the electrical circuit. So this is all the responsibility of these two brothers. After all, they are a uh, very um skill, okay, skill worker, experience. And then, usually there's still, uh, I mean, there's uh, some practice lah. Okay, there was an old practice where a galvanometer was applied directly to each detonator. I mean, it is being connected, okay, for testing purposes. But this is very, very, I mean, old practice and very, very dangerous. Okay, and they are aware of this. And then actually, it was being prohibited under statute. But they, I mean, they know the risk and they want to use this old practice. I mean, they are used to do this thing. Okay. And then one unlucky day, that's why we have the case here. 
uh, explosion took place and then they suffered injury. So now plaintiff um, claim okay, his brother was to be blamed for the explosion. I mean, one of them should be responsible. Okay, uh, And then in order to claim, of course, a plaintiff wants to uh, file a claim against the employer under vicarious <coughs> liability. Uh, VL is a topic for your thoughts too later. I mean, you are suing employer. You want to sue your employer. I mean, you want to sue employee, but then you are suing employer together because employer has more money to pay. So you are su suing employer. So now uh, he, he was blaming his brother. So he was suing the employer. I mean, the boss, lah, the one who hired his brother. He's also working there. All right. And then at the lower court, okay, trial court here, uh, the plaintiff succeeded, okay. So he was awarded half of the total amount of damages. I mean, he was um, responsible for half lah. That's why he got half of the compensation. But ICI appeal. That's why the uh, quotation. I mean, the name of the case is ICI and Shetler. So this is appeal case. So defendant appeal. The company appeal. And now, uh, the court was actually um agreeable to the argument by the company, okay, by ICI. The court held that plaintiff and his brother were both expert. Okay, I mean, they are not the normal uh, worker. They are expert in their field. And they freely, they voluntarily assume the risk. They know the risk, okay, involved in using the galvanometer. And uh, no one actually forced them to use that way, to, to be, uh, I mean, to use that old practice. No pressure from any other source, okay, no pressure from ICI. And then, uh, in fact, actually, they received warning okay, about complying with the new safety regulation. But they said, no, no, we know our, uh, we know the risk and we want to still stick to the old practice. So they know, I mean, they know the risk and they suffered injury later. So because of that, okay, the defense of volunteer and injury will apply. The court allow okay, the defense here. Uh, because why? In this case, uh, it represents true and free consent of the risk okay, to the risk here. So the, the, the court found that the plaintiff uh, who was injured in the accident, okay, in the incident, had consented to the injury. So because of that, okay, no vicarious liability. I mean, uh, employer was not liable. Understand the case or not, class? So this is one of the example of the case in which VNFI was successfully uh, uh, applied. I mean, uh, defendant managed to convince the court. I mean, in this case, appellant. Lah. Okay, ICI was appellant, uh, but um, they were the defendant at the lower court. So they, they want, I mean, they tried to argue and they used this particular defense and they succeeded. So no payment on the part of the uh, company okay, towards the plaintiff, despite the injury suffered by the plaintiff. So can you see the connection? I mean, all this while, we focus on the cost of, Cause of action key okay, on the part of plaintiff. Now for final topic, the focus is on the defendant. What could defendant do? Because you would know uh, your client later, is it plaintiff or is it defendant? So if you are representing defendant as your client, of course you want to prove to the court that yes, my client is not liable because of these defenses. Can you see or not how important the topic is? Okay, very, very important. I think we have a few minutes left, okay? And then uh, it will be automatically uh, terminated, kind of, less than one minute. I mean, that's um, a warning. So I think, do you want to continue? I think we have to continue because it's pretty long uh, discussion, a lot long topic. Okay, once uh, the session um, ends, okay, uh, we are using the same uh, link okay, to, re to restart. Lah. It will be part two for our lecture tonight. After all, um, it's now, what's the time now? It's something, 8.30 something. So maybe we have another 20 minutes class, okay? All right, after this for the second part. Uh, once um, 